So now that we're close to back to school, I wanna give you a couple of tips so you don't get scammed when you're trying to buy a laptop, either for yourself or maybe your kid. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips and I'm not talking about a specific brand of laptop. I'm just gonna tell you how to choose a laptop and to know which one is ideal for you. If you're buying a laptop for a kid, most likely teachers are gonna tell you you need a Windows laptop, you probably won't need a Mac laptop. But if you do, I can still give you a couple of tips, although it's gonna be rare a kid is using a, a Mac, but it'd be interesting. First of all, they're gonna tell you probably get the cheapest one. The only things you're gonna be using on that laptop are probably Word, PowerPoint, and the basics. But if you want this laptop to last you at least a couple of years, I would please go for at least eight gigs of RAM. A lot of laptops on the market are extremely cheap and have about four or some rare cases, even six gigs of RAM. Please choose eight. That will give you at least a couple of years before you have to buy another one. Another tip I can give you when you're looking for a laptop, especially for a kid, do not buy one that has a hard drive. What then, what do laptops have or how do you use them? Well, actually some laptops have something called an SSD. An SSD is a solid state drive. This is a lot more resistant, especially against vibrations. If you have a small kid, most likely that kid is gonna throw that laptop into a backpack, maybe move the backpack around, jump around, throw things around, well, be a kid. And what's gonna happen, the hard drive is gonna get scraped and you're gonna have to eventually replace it or maybe even buy another one. And there's actually a third option if you're buying a laptop for your kid. Well, you can also choose one that's upgrade friendly. You have to ask wherever you're buying it and make sure you have removable RAM or even a removable hard drive. But you just said hard drives, no, yeah. But if you can save money on buying one that actually has a hard drive and you can replace that hard drive with an SSD, there's tons of tutorials on YouTube to show you how to do this. But if you're just simply not adventurous enough to open a laptop, well, don't worry. Go specifically for one that already has an SSD. Second tip for a laptop you're buying for your son, nephew, or teenager. If they tell you you need a Windows laptop, there's gonna be different options. Well, actually only two of them. You're gonna be able to buy an AMD processor or you're gonna be able to buy one that has an Intel processor. Most likely Intel processors are gonna be a little bit more expensive. And a lot of salesmen are gonna tell you, yes, this gives you the best performance. This is gonna last you more years. Intel and AMD are direct competition. And most of the time, Intel does have a little bit more performance, but it is more expensive. If you're gonna use it for school, for educational purposes and probably the basics like maybe email, Word, PowerPoint, or even small applications, the processor is not gonna actually represent such an important role unless your teachers tell you. If you're gonna be studying something like robotics or maybe biology or something that's pretty demanding, your teachers are most likely gonna tell you which processor you actually need to run the basics on that software. But if they don't, I would definitely go for AMD. Although I do prefer Intel, AMD is a lot cheaper and you get a lot better bang for your buck because they are pretty similar. An example would be if you get an i5, the equivalent to an i5 would be a Ryzen 5. The Ryzen 5 has a little bit less performance than the i5, but I'm telling you, you probably won't notice the difference and you can save quite a couple of bucks on that. Same thing goes for the i7, same thing goes for the i9. You can find Ryzen 7 as well as Ryzen 9. If we were talking about performance and jumping to something like maybe a Threadripper, this would be a completely different video. But for school purposes, the processor, well, you can actually probably save money on there. Unless you wanna treat your kid and maybe get something for him to play on, well, then you might consider getting a better processor, but you would also need a graphics card. And there we go for the third tip. Graphics card. A lot of laptops on the market have a graphics card. And unless school specifies you need a graphics card on your computer for some kind of software they're gonna teach you on, you most likely won't need it unless you're gaming on it. Especially if your kid maybe already has a PlayStation, maybe a Nintendo Switch, maybe an Xbox, they definitely won't need a graphics card. Sorry kids, you're probably gonna hate me because of this, but unless you wanna treat them again and let them play on that laptop. If not, I would definitely skip a laptop that has a graphics card and save money there because most laptops that have a graphics card are way more expensive depending on which one they have. And also you have to take into account that a lot of these laptops that do have a graphics card, well, they are actually gamer laptops most of the cases. So that actually pumps the price up and I have quite a specific opinion about gaming laptops. 
I do believe they're close to being called a scam because there's nothing gamer about them except that they do have a graphics card and there are other laptops from the same brand they have a graphics card and are not called gamer they can be a little bit cheaper but again if you don't need it skip it third but not least check the warranty all of these brands have different warranties and they don't always offer the same thing so check specifically what they cover and how much time the longer the warranty well obviously the better and also check if you have local retailers which will actually make this warranty valid because sometimes they will ask you to ship it and you might just not be able to do that because you might need it for school the next day and you just can't be waiting till they ship it back so always make sure if you can having a local warranty retailer i guess that's what you could call it now if you're a student and you're not buying a laptop for your kid or maybe your nephew or a small person than you and you're buying your first laptop and you don't know what to go with well some of these tips apply the same way first of all check out what are the minimum requirements of the software you're going to be using in school if they tell you you at least need an i5 and at least need eight gigs of ram well that'll be the bare minimum but also check that maybe your ryzen 7 will be way better than an i5 you don't necessarily have to go with intel unless your school specifies it because a lot of schools We'll just say Intel because of the requirements and the power of that processor. But a Ryzen 7 probably has the same power as an i5 and you won't have any issues. But do check it with your school, especially with your teachers. They most likely will know if the software will be compatible with whatever you're learning. Also, future proofing is a good idea. I know you can't always go the most expensive route, but sometimes it's a good idea. Because if you buy the bare minimum of eight gigs of RAM and you're gonna study something that maybe takes four or six years, you might have to purchase another laptop during that period. And if you just go maybe with something of 16 gigs of RAM or 32 and find a good deal on it, I would definitely do that. The more the RAM, the better. I mean, you don't always need it, but it is a way to future-proof yourself because Windows always has an issue with Windows updates where a lot of these updates start consuming a little bit more RAM just by having the operating system on them. So remember, the more RAM, the better. Second advice, you don't need to buy the most expensive laptop that has the most storage on it. By the way, this also applies to Mac. If you're gonna buy an Apple computer, you don't need the one that has the most storage. There are different options. Apple has the cloud. If you don't trust the cloud or you're not always connected to the internet, there are other options. For example, external storage. And this also applies for kids. If you want to have additional storage and you maybe want to save quite a few bucks buying the one that has, let's say, 256 gigs of the internal storage, it's always a good idea to have an external hard drive or an external SSD. You can always back up your information or in a lot of cases, you can work straightly from the SSD. Like if you were working from your internal storage. SSDs most of the time are actually cheaper than buying higher internal storage. So you can also save quite a few bucks that way. The last tip, if you're a student, most of the time they ask you to get a laptop because you will be using it maybe on the field, you will be moving this thing, or you might be using it where you don't always have a physical connection. A good advice I could actually give you is to buy an external power bank, but you have to be aware that not all power banks can actually power a laptop. I'm gonna put one down below I know can power a laptop, and this is a great option in case you're on the move and you don't always have the ability to connect to an outlet. Not all laptops have a great battery life, especially if you're buying one that's a lot cheaper than the premium ones on the market. Or even if you're buying a premium one and you do need that graphics card, most likely you're gonna get about three hours of that laptop because you're probably doing quite demanding stuff on it. So an external power bank is always a good idea. And the last tip I have in general, if you actually get to choose and they tell you, you can bring either Windows or Mac, which one should you choose? If you ask me, I actually think it depends on the task you're doing, but I do believe that Apple is way better right now than most Windows laptops. Apple Silicon is simply a game changer, depending again on what you do. If you wanna play on it, definitely not. You might wanna go Windows. But if you're studying something like maybe video editing, rendering, 3D modeling, or even you want it to be a little bit more durable and you wanna future-proof yourself, the best option out of the two, I would definitely say Apple. 
and I'm not a fanboy. I actually had a Windows PC for years. That's what I built this channel on. And now we actually use an Apple Studio with an M1 Ultra, which is way over the top for most people. But we also have a MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro. And it actually has about three years and it doesn't feel outdated whatsoever. I can edit the same videos I do on the Mac Studio that's way more expensive on the MacBook Pro, but the MacBook Pro takes a little bit longer rendering and has a little bit more limitations, but it can get the job done. Also, if you're buying Apple, consider going on an earlier generation of processor. If you go M1 or M2, you can most likely save a couple of bucks and you will still be getting a great performance out of it and saving quite a few bucks. If you wanna go top tier with the newest one, well, you can get an iPad, which has an M4, although I don't recommend it. iPad OS is still not compatible with everything. Or you can go with M3 on their laptop lineup, but I would definitely go with something like M2, save quite a few bucks and still be able to use it for quite a while without any issues. Well, remember, don't buy a laptop just for the brand. Check out what specs you need. Check out all these pointers I gave you. And also remember, you don't need to listen to the salesman that tells you this is the best laptop in the market and will last you forever. Now you know what you need everything to use for. And also, if you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe, drop a like, it helps us quite a bit. And check out maybe this video over here that I think you might like as well.